Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. My mission for today, or at least the aim, is just the big poly, the big, not the poly tunnel tidy. I mean, I am going to be tidying the poly tunnel, but the big allotment tidy is what I was meant to say. I've been putting this off for a while and just everywhere I look on the plot, there's stuff that needs sorting. It needs to find a home. It needs somewhere to go. It's generally been caused by the chaos of building this tunnel over winter and rebuilding my greenhouse. Unfortunately, it is chucking it down. <laughs> well, it's sort of, it's meandering between chucking it down and spitting. So thankfully I've bought my waterproofs, but it is gonna be challenging to film, but we always manage to make it work somehow. So today the objective is just a bloody good tidy, finding a home for everything. And I'm gonna feel very relieved afterwards. I think I'll probably just start in the tunnel. I've got loads of manure and bagged kind of, uh, what do you call it, spent compost over here, but there's stuff everywhere like uh, pots over there that can now find a new home in the greenhouse. There's loads of cardboard here that I just need to break up, some big bits of cardboard down here that um, I've got in mind can mulch a bed or something, but I've just got to take the sellotape off, put those on a bed. It's all that kind of quite boring, quite dull stuff that just needs to be done. And I'm really looking forward to doing it and having a bit of a blank slate afterwards so that I can start focusing on the bed prep and actually giving it a mow or a strim and just tidying the bloody thing up, you know? I must say, I forget, every time I you know, have a little break from this, I forget that I detest this. I absolutely hate getting sellotape off cardboard. That was a good bit. It's always one worth doing at the comfort, in the comfort of, you know, home before bringing it all to the allotment. the boxes from the, the Copa Grey staging and they did have quite a lot of sellotape on. Just one of those things that becomes like shockingly time consuming. You know, half an hour goes by and you think, how am I still doing this? <laughs> Very annoying, but the reason I'm keeping all this is because although in some ways I had a bit of a mixed experience doing no dig beds last year, I've realized the, the user error there and I, I want to keep those to one side just in case I want to do any new no dig beds or do another cardboard mulch on any of the particularly weedy beds. But some of the ones that I did cardboard and then well rotted horse manure, they've stayed pretty much like weed free all winter. You know, maybe one or two little bits of grass have popped up, but in some of the beds it has worked wonders. In others, not so much. I'm not really sure why there's a big differentiation, but um, I definitely want to keep all of that to give some more no-dig beds a go. And I know I've just said that the mission today is tidying, but I've just consolidated a load of spent compost into the 30 litre tubs, which means I've got a few spare now and I've got a few over there with some spent compost. So I think I might sow some potatoes in these tubs as well. I'll keep them in the polytunnel for a little while and then put them out a little bit later. Oh, we do have one casualty as well. This is what I actually wanted to show you. Somehow, when I picked up the cardboard, one of these Red Baron onion seedlings was launched. <laughs> Absolutely launched across the tunnel. And I only noticed because I thought, oh, that looks like a really nice bit of compost. Where's that come from? And it was in these roots. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. But only one, and look, really, really healthy onion seedlings. So I'm quite pleased. And it is time for these to go out soon. So. I just need to decide where these are going and then I can probably put them in a bed. Before I do the potatoes, there's some more just random small cardboard boxes. I'm just gonna break these up for the hot composter probably. And then there's loads of these compost bags which are lying around that just need to be kind of consolidated. They do come in useful, so I'm not gonna bin these just yet. But do you see what I mean about just tidying? And I've not even left the tunnel yet. It's probably been an hour somehow. How does it happen?
Did you see that video the other day where I was saying about having to be really careful with the, uh, you know, everything on that floating shelf just in case something lost balance and fell? Well, I just noticed that this little tray of brassicas was looking a little wet, you know, it was sat in water and I thought, oh, I'll just pick that up and tip some of it out. And it was sat in a, uh, a big tray. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, immediately just uh, flopped over and made quite a big crash. <sighs> you do have to laugh at these things, don't you? That is uh, beyond recoverable and, <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Unfortunately, just yesterday, I sewed this. This was a tray of brassicas. <laughs> oh, dear me. You win some, you lose some, don't you, folks? <laughs> At least they hadn't all germinated and, you know, been cared for for like three weeks. They were just about to go out and now they're all dead. Um, it is a bit of a shame though, because I'm just going to have to completely re-sew that. And that compost now is like, uh, <laughs> you know, if I reuse it, you're going to have brassicas sprouting out left, right and centre. Never mind. Sorting through all these bamboo canes, not exactly riveting, but it's quite a nice rainy day job and a nice one to get the podcast onto. It's one of those things I've been putting off since the end of the chilly season. Most of these little ones with all the stuff attached to it, which is a bit annoying. These were all perfect for um, supporting my chilies. Put three of those in a pot and they're really, really sturdy. I do have some, like this one which I bought a while back for the bigger structures and I've never used that many of. So I'll be using some of these this year. But I brought it all into the tunnel because this was just out in the elements and bamboo does not last too long if you don't store it well over winter. So it just needs a bit of tidy. Well, as you can no doubt hear, the weather has only gotten worse and worse as this afternoon has gone on, but I'm waterproofed up and the tunnel is pretty much, there's a cabbage white butterfly on the tunnel. Look at that. Normally a fan, but I do have cabbages in here just resting in the seed tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop him somewhere else. Anyway, yes. So basically impossible for me to film outside, but there's lots of moving stuff around. I need to do quite a bit of timber that just needs to be moved around. There's like a pile of logs from my cherry tree that I wanna cut up and take home as firewood. There's wheelie bins, there's loads of timber that I wanna dismantle and the, those old potting benches and that kind of stuff. So there's a few things that I might be able to like bring to the poly tunnel just to show you something. Otherwise there's gonna be no video for the rest of the day. Now, while I don't particularly think of myself as a fair weather gardener, ordinarily on a day like today, I would probably be packing up or finding something to do in the dry, in the greenhouses or in the poly tunnel. But I've got a week off and the weather forecast is like this all week. So sometimes you've just gotta put on some waterproofs and get busy. This wheelie bin needs a new home. Oh no. This thing can come in really handy when you're doing building projects. I often use it for like chucking loads of stones in, but for now it just needs to go elsewhere. One thing I have been meaning to do for ages is find out whether or not this freebie wheelbarrow, which I found, which is kind of slightly rotting through, a few holes in the bottom there, has a very flat tire and I've been meaning to pump it up and see 
whether or not I can breathe a bit of new life into it because it is very frustrating to use. Ah, oh, it is not nice. This chair I've left out after my bonfire a while back. Ah, oh, there we go. Need to store this in the shed. What I really need is a shed. It would make all of this tidying so much easier, but so much stuff just doesn't have a place to go. But at least we've got a new winter project, haven't we? Because <laughs> I never have enough projects on the go. God, it is miserable today, but do you ever have those days where, um, you know, your allotment kind of surprises you a little bit? You know, I've not been expecting to be enjoying this, but actually it's just such a relief to be just, I don't know, going through old piles of wood, getting rid of stuff that you've been wanting to kind of get rid of for a long time. It was kind of bittersweet taking apart those, um, those old potting benches, because I forgot. Um, you know, I inherited them with this greenhouse originally when we went to pick this up. It was a guy who just bought a house who wasn't interested in gardening or whatever, so we basically took the potting benches and everything that was in here, as well as the greenhouse itself. And uh, I did quite a few modifications to them. I basically like dismantled them and rebuilt them so I could fit them through the door. I think it was one of the first things I ever did on the channel. I don't know if I've still got the, um, the footage, but I realized, you know, I recognized the screws that I was using. I was using these fat old screws. Um, really good and still holding quite tight, but that thing was just rotting and, and no longer fit for purpose, and it's been replaced by this glorious new staging. So um, the way that I'd done it as well was very weird. I built it bespoke for the old base, so all of the legs are actually different heights. <laughs> Instead of leveling the ground, I leveled the table. Bit weird, but um, that, and um, we've just been visited by Robin, who is normally around in winter. And uh, I don't know if it's the same one or whatever, but I'm quite used to being followed around by a robin. And I haven't seen one in absolutely ages, and it's getting so close. It was just um, sat on the tool handles, you know? I don't know if it came across on the footage, but it's just one of those things that just puts such a smile on your face, you know? Just spent about five minutes just watching it flitting around, you know, as it was watching me, hoping that I would unearth some worms and that kind of thing. I'm just having a really good time. It's just quite nice, despite the rain. It has been quite slow going. There's loads and loads more to do. It's quite slow going. I think the weather doesn't help, but um, I've got a little bit more time, so I'm going to do a bit more before I have to leave. I am really, really pleased 
pleased with this bed. I wasn't too sure what to expect having covered it. It's had quite a lot of manure last year, a lot of mulch and that kind of thing, and there's just a few of the perennial weeds coming up. It looks like mainly dandelions, and there's a few verbena stems actually, which I'm hoping if they get a bit of light, they might come back, they might be done for, but it would be cool if they did come back. And right over that end, I can see this is where I've chucked a load of kind of grass clods and the cooch grass clods just come back with a vengeance. That's what I've seen in the tunnel. That idea of just turning over the cooch grass and then letting it degrade just doesn't seem to be playing true on this plot. Like I say, especially in the tunnel where it's all just coming back with a vengeance, which is a bit annoying. I kind of wish I'd just pulled up those clods and chucked them in a wheelbarrow and got rid of them. Um, but you know, we live and learn, we live and learn, but it does seem like I've got super cooch grass on this plot. Wherever you dig it up, it just seems to sort of come back unless you get rid of it properly. So I think I might start being a bit more, uh, managing that a little bit more intensely. And you know, I was just saying what a great time I was having. I just feel like I suddenly hit a wall and it's a shame because, well, I'm, I'm kind of running out of time as well, which is a good excuse, but there's so, so, so much more just of the big tidy that I want to do. You know, I've done a little bit around the beds. I've had a really good session with uh, around the compost bays and the timber over there, which is fantastic. But now I've got a new timber pile um, that I need to organize a little bit better. Most of it hopefully will be used this week, so it's not the end of the world, but little bits down kind of here like in the corners between the greenhouses. I just want to stack up all the bricks. I want to find all the bricks on the plot and get them. There's some quad grays there, the blue piping, a few bags of rubbish, that kind of stuff. I could spend hours in that other greenhouse as well, just sorting through that, although I have made a really good dent. And there's just, I could just, I could probably spend all week up here just tidying and I'd be busy the whole time, you know? Um, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of progress. Thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Peppeteer patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks and Garden, Andrew and Sarah.